Hi everyone, James here from F9. Let's have a look at these stems for F9 88 keys. I'll play from the breakdown. Okay, so as you can see, we've got complete and utter separation from everything that came off the mix. Now, I'm just going to solo the drums and effects for that main kick in there. There's a very good reason for this. Hang on. Now, the reason I've just played you those is, please, do what you want with them. They are out there, just the drums and the effects. You can use them in whichever way that you wish. The only thing I would say is all of the music is going to remain uh, copyright of me because I'm really proud of this. It's a great piece of music. I've been working on it for a while. Um, but I do want to get it out there so you guys can see right inside a full production. Now, let me just show you some of the bits and pieces here. This all started with this piano riff. And that was from this patch inside the F9 Origins Old School Pianos collection. Now, the moment I had this riff, I knew two things. One, that it was going to work with chord changes like this. And it would also work and sound quite moody with a sustained bass note, as we've got at the front and in the middle breaks. It uses a suspended voicing just on those first chords, and that gives it this kind of interesting and moody quality. But the great thing is, there's plenty of room due to the simplicity of the actual chord rise and the main piano riff to then put a million and one different melodies over the top. And what I wanted to do throughout this entire production, and I hope this is a bit of a masterclass in this, is I wanted there to be melody, rememberable single line melody throughout. So the first one that comes in is this extra piano part. Now that's really pleasing because the first note plays the minor third of one of the chords and that's a good place to start because you're setting quite a nice mood. But then later on I'm able to use a different counter melodies like this one. There was a couple of things that I knew I wanted to do with this piece. I love big piano tracks, and here I'm talking about Gant Decor, Pajano, all of that kind of stuff, and I kind of wanted to reference all of it. That's really where this uh, drum fill comes from at the beginning. Listen to that distortion and the noise floor at the beginning. Now, this track has been through several iterations, and there are some mistakes in the stems. There was no way I was going to kind of pull them out. There's a couple of reasons for them. Now, if we go down to the strings here, the ones that kind of come in uh, maybe the second or third time around the main riff, you'll hear that there's time stretch artifacts. And that's because originally the track was at 122, and I've bumped it up to 124 because all the tempos are starting to rise again naturally. Um, but one of the reasons this took me so long is stylistically, I didn't quite know where to place it because I knew I wanted to have this uh, real big piano sound to the whole thing. But also, I've really loved a lot of the modern synth wave and the 80s flavoured stuff that's kind of um, crept back into the public perception as well. Now, I really wanted to add a little bit of that, and that's provided me with this great juxtaposition um, in between the piano parts, because I wanted this constant stream of melody. So when the piano parts aren't playing, I then added some synth lines. <laughs> That 
That sound is actually a multi-layered Oberheim OBXA with, I think it's a sound I made on Massive Plus as well. Beautiful sounding plugin, by the way. If you've not really checked it out, that is quite something to dip your toes into. Uh, but as you can hear, it's really set alight, the bass line. Now, a couple of interesting things on the bass line. It's very 80s orientated. And quite synth wavy, but I, I'm going to be totally honest. I really struggle to get something at club power out of the analog. So what you are listening to there is a um, a mixture of some of the analogs that I've got in the studio. I think it's a Jupiter 8 patch that was multi-sampled from the past. A little bit of OBX. That's why you can hear some hiss right at the top there. And it was a um, a preset that I created on Reveal Spire. So I got the kind of best of both worlds. I got this modern, digital, very solid bass sound and some analog moves in between. Now, the more droning basses, they're pure analog. That's the OBX uh, layered up a few times. with a ton of distortion and growl, as you can see, but together the two really work well. And what's important, the reason I played that bit back is I'm repeating the end of effectively a four bar chord sequence. And the beauty with that is when you pick those kind of repeats out, you're in that euphoric, okay, we're going somewhere, we're going somewhere. Oh, repeat, repeat, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then you can drop back into the root. Now, obviously, we are in Logic here, but the stems are the same in every single DAW. Um, there's no processing on them. They are perfectly mixed, as they were on the Behringer Wing Desk. And the reason I went back to a desk mix is that I'm just very quick at balancing stuff on a desk, and I wanted to really put the wing through its paces. It was amazing. 48 channels of USB audio in and out of that device. It's quite something. Okay, let me take you on a quick tour of the whole thing. Obviously, we needed an intro for DJ mixing. <laughs> So we've just got a filtered bass part there that's coming up on the actual root and some really tasty little standout sounds that just kind of jump out at the beginning. And then we're into the first drop down. And um, for reasons that I can't actually remember, it goes up and then comes back down to root. But it gives it this nice little lift as the piano starts each time. <laughs> So next up, we start on some of the counter melodies. Before we go into our little build up, just before we hit the main uh, kick in. Okay, now we're off, and it's not only driving with the bass line that's heavily syncopated to that piano part, in other words, they're playing similar rhythms, we've also got this fantastic sequence. Now, as you can hear, it's been through the processing mill, but that actually came off one of the Behringer 101s. It's got a little FM tweak that you can uh, set to the actual oscillators, and I think the filters as well, can't remember, but uh, it was actually triggered using the built-in sequencer from that device. I was ever so impressed with it. It's a great little thing, ever so cheap as well. And you can hear it just cuts through this stuff like a knife. Now, one thing I wanted to really make sure on the arrangement, we've got a repeated piano riff that can get boring. So quickly, we're starting to bring in extra parts. And this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to get this stem set out to you, because it will show you exactly how to build a track. So here we are at the first drop, effectively. That's the modern parlance, I believe. Then, as soon as we're through the first round, a set of strings come in. Now, they're just playing nice rhythmical chords, and they're reinforcing the music. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, as you heard earlier, they don't sound great, but they do work perfectly in the track. And that's why I didn't go back and replace them after tempo changes and things like that. I couldn't actually get them to fit that beautifully sonically. Now, one more time round after this, and there's actually some trancier sounds that start to come in. Now they build up quietly throughout all of this and this progression of sounds and layering against your main riffs is a fantastic uh, vehicle for getting great arrangement ideas. So if we pop in just to the this kind of first mini breakdown. <laughs> Uh, here I'm trying to hit that kind of um, gat decor moment where it's got this beautiful pad sound uh, in one of the breakdowns. It's all 90s, listen to that. And But these trance uh, little plucks are really starting to come up as well. And yes, that was from the classic trance device, the Roland JP8080. Uh, it's a fantastic box. Still sounding great after all of these years. Now you add all that music together. And put some power underneath it. And filter out and pull out some of the drums. I've also added this little set of uh, 90s percussion. Roland 727 tapping away there nicely. Ah, you hear that note, that sustain note right there? Well, I actually created a riser that goes all the way up and then hits out exactly at the right note. So they're, they're kind of like a keyed riser. Excellent trick. You can do that in nearly all DAWs by... Um, taking a, a, a standard sustain note and putting a pitch rise on it. In Logic, you can actually do that with the speed up fade and then putting a massive amount of reverb and decay on it. And as you heard there, an awful lot of distortion as well. This is a busy track and distortion helps to bed things. And you get this. Now we're back into a groove section with that synth line in it. And why does that sound so pleasing? Why does that change over? Well, it's because you're hanging around just before it, two chords. You're repeating two chords that are higher. Your brain is automatically waiting for it to sink back down to the root. And when you get it, it's just absolute relief. <laughs> Now, for the first round of that synth, I actually kept the bass line on one note, which is the tonic of the track. I've been told off a few times for using the word root when I mean tonic. I'll be honest, I still prefer the term root, and look, you guys know what I mean. But anyway, the second time of the synth round, I then put the chord changes in, and that, again, lifts that synth line up. So instead of just repeating it, you get a musical change. <laughs> And all of this is being helped along by some Juno stabs. And a patch I think is called French Kissing out of the uh, F9 Origins keys and synth rack. Then, well, I thought for this next section when the pianos come back in, I want to make this a real little house moment. So, of course, you've got to put in the ubiquitous M1 organ sound. Again,
again, we're just, we're repeating basically earlier riffs, but we're changing their perspective with different sounds. That is a fantastic arrangement technique, and it, you can really speed through arrangements if you try this out. Now, later on, our trance sound comes back with its mates. So it's starting to get layered up there, and what you're hearing is the original uh, JP8080 pluck sound, as well as the OBXA floating around in the stereo image. And I'm really pleased of this section as it rolls over into the big breakdown. <laughs> And you hear just how bringing those shakers back in with the piano there lets you know, okay, basically we're off again. This is going to go off in a minute. The one thing I didn't want to do was any of these kind of great big current cheesy build up, build up, build up, build up, but there's enough of that going on. I wanted it to be a little bit more classic. So it's going back in with that massive drum fill straight back into it. <laughs> Now that for me is a little bit more honest. That's actually working well because of the musical changes and the dynamics and the sounds that you're bringing in, as opposed to just repeat, 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 release, off they go. Um, now, one thing I want to draw your attention to towards the end here is that you can see in these set of stems, and by the way, I've got this heavily magnified um, so that we can see what we're doing. They are not this loud, the set of stems. They are actually at this level, so they all come together beautifully. I've just pumped it up so that we can see what we're doing visually on this uh, on this screen. You can see towards the end as it starts to get bigger and bigger, particularly as the synth line comes back in, something has got to give. And here you'll see me start to pull stuff down. So for example, let's uh, just open all of these up so we can really take a look. This is uh, the current cursor position is where the synth line starts to come back in right towards the end, and it's very busy. So here I pull the trance down a little bit. I pull the melody pianos. The main pianos are still pushing forward a bit because you need that to kind of underpin it. Um, but generally, there's a few things coming out to make room for those extra de devices that you're putting in, and that's key. Otherwise, you just end up in a frigging great big mess trying to fit everything together, and it's almost impossible. You must learn to make room if you're going to put big new sounds in. <laughs> Here with this riff, it just continues to rise up. It's like a barber pole. That was absolutely deliberate. And pretty much you can do this with any production. If you've got a synth line, you can rise it all the way up if you pick the scale notes carefully against your chord. <laughs> So that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough of this track. Please go and grab the stems. They're all there absolutely free for every single DAW on the planet in some form. And don't forget, these drums are for the taking. So come and grab them, have some fun. I hope you learned something from it. Let us know. Email us, drop comments onto any of the posts containing all of this. We do keep an eye on it. My wife and I are very vigilant on all of this stuff, and we love to hear what you guys have got to say. All the very best, and we'll see you soon.